In this video, we're going to go back to the world of looking at simple supply and demand curves so that we can introduce the ideas related to a monopoly. And then we're going to go back to the world of calculating cost curves so that we can see how calculating cost curves and marginal costs and average total cost with our tables with some more detailed numbers how we can bring the idea of a monopoly into that situation. So let's just refresh a few ideas that we used with simple demand and supply curves because these will come in handy later. If we're looking at demand, remember that's marginal benefit or how much someone would be willing to pay for an additional unit, the most they'd be willing to pay. And marginal cost, if you remember, was the additional cost, which is a supply curve additional cost of producing one more unit. And so where those two equal, we get the equilibrium price, which here looks like it's eight units and sorry, not eight units, eight dollars. And we look down at the quantity axis and we see that uh, that would be at six units in this market. And let me just mark those real quickly here for reference. And then we'll get rid of them and talk about what changes with a monopoly. And so there's the equilibrium price and there's the equilibrium quantity. And if you recall, this area below the demand curve, but above the market price is uh, consumer surplus. Below the market price, but above the supply or marginal cost curve is producer surplus, which remember is not the same as profit because the total revenue is this entire box and below the supply curve is the variable cost and if you take the total revenue six times eight is forty eight dollars subtract off the variable cost then you get the producers surplus but then after the uh, business gets the producer surplus they have to pay fixed costs which we cannot see in this graph and so consumer surplus up, to, up top here so now that we have those ideas in our mind nice and fresh let's see what happens with a monopoly with a monopoly they do not have a market price there is only one large firm there are barriers to entry so there's no competition so we don't like to call this purple line the supply curve anymore because a supply curve tells us for a certain price market price that a business might see what quantity will be supplied it tells the relationship between price and quantity supplied well there's no such thing as a market price really when you have a monopolist they set the market price they set the price to be whatever they decide in order to mon uh, maximize their profit so we don't like to call this a supply curve anymore. Instead, we just say this is the marginal cost for the monopolist. Now, I'll leave that there, but this is just something you have to note. Now, since there's no equilibrium between uh, supply and demand, the monopolist chooses the price that maximizes profit. Let's first remind ourselves, why is this an equilibrium? price why would eight dollars be an equilibrium price here because businesses are not going to be willing to produce a unit where the additional cost is higher than the price that they can sell it for which is eight dollars this market price so if marginal cost is bigger than the revenue coming in for selling that unit eight dollars a business won't be willing to produce it now similarly a consumer's marginal benefit, additional willingness to pay, if that's less than the market price of $8, they're not willing to buy another unit it, because their willingness to pay is less than the $8. And so that's why people stop buying at $8 and businesses stop producing at $8. Now with a monopolist, it's going to be a similar kind of idea. However, the key idea that's different with a monopolist is what is marginal revenue. Since there's no market price, what the monopolist wants to know is what is the additional revenue I would get for selling another unit? Now, some people blindly say that a monopolist can charge any price they want. 
Well, that is true. They can charge a trillion dollars or a hundred dollars for this product, but for a hundred dollars, no one would buy anything. And even at twenty dollars, no one would buy any units. And so the monopolist can charge any price it wants, but it doesn't want to charge twenty or a hundred or a million dollars. That's where the marginal revenue comes in. So we're going to make a little table here. This demand curve has an equation, 20 minus 2Q. And so what we're going to do is list some prices and quantities. And so using that equation, using this demand line, if the price was $20, the quantity sold would be zero. That point right here, $20, quantity zero. And their total revenue would be zero. And marginal revenue doesn't make sense to talk about until we get to actually sell a unit. So what if they lowered their price so they could sell one unit? Look at this quantity one, price eighteen. And we could do this we could do this with this equation as well. So if they want to sell a unit, they have to charge eighteen dollars. They'll sell one unit. Total revenue, one times eighteen, eighteen bucks. Marginal revenue, eighteen dollars. So by selling the first unit, their total revenue increases by $18. That's what we mean by marginal revenue. Now, the demand curve says, since it has a slope of minus 2, that you're always going to have to lower your price by another $2 in order to sell one more unit. And so we can see this price here, $16 and two units. Total revenue would be 32 Now, how much is the marginal revenue? How much did total revenue increase? Well, 18 up to 32, the marginal revenue is 14 bucks. So what this tells the monopolist, if they want to sell that second unit, their additional revenue will be $14. And they only want to sell it if the additional revenue is bigger than the additional cost of production, the marginal cost. And so we can keep doing this. Let me uh, fill out the rest of this table. You pause the video and you fill out the rest of the table and I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, the price always goes down $2 in order to sell one more unit. And then the total revenue is just price times quantity, and then we're just calculating the marginal revenue, the additional revenue, because the monopolist is the only game in town. If they want to sell more units, then they're going to have to lower their price. So they, the monopolist satisfies this entire demand curve here. And so they just pick a point, a price quantity combination. We call them a price maker because they pick any price quantity combination they want on the demand curve. And so by looking at marginal revenue here, let's notice the pattern. This is what's most important. That each time the price goes down to, what happens to marginal revenue? Well, marginal revenue goes down by... Whoop, I have calculated some wrong, some things wrong here. Hold on. Presto change, oh, I have fixed my mistake. So each time the price goes down by two, the marginal revenue drops by four, 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 going down four every time. And this is always going to be exactly what the relationship is between what a demand curve looks like, down two over one, down two over one, and marginal revenue. Marginal revenue goes down twice as fast, as long as we're looking at a demand that is a straight line. And that's what you do in most introductory classes. And that's all we're going to look at for right now, is demand that goes down in a straight line. Marginal revenue will also be a straight line with a slope that is down 4 over 1, down 4 over 1. So here's what you do to graph marginal revenue. All you got to do is start at the same place the demand curve starts and go down twice as fast. And if a line goes down twice as fast, instead of intersecting the x-axis at 10 here, it's going to intersect twice as fast at 5. And so now you know how to draw a marginal revenue curve. It's just that easy. And so what's going to happen here with this marginal revenue we can see that marginal cost, represented by what used to be the supply curve, is the purple. We look to see where these two intersect each other. Now in this case, the way I've drawn my lines is a little bit of a dilemma because uh, if we're assuming you can only produce whole units, that's a problem. But let's suppose we're making milk, where we can produce half a unit or a third of a unit, etc. 
And so if so, what the monopolists would want to do is stop producing here where the uh, quantity, they look down, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And let me color that red. And this would tell them to stop producing at about three and a third units. Now we could solve for this analytically, but we won't go through that trouble. So the monopolist would produce three and a third units. And then what the monopolist is going to do is look up at the demand curve to figure out what is the highest price I can charge where people will buy these three and two thirds units. And in this case, it looks like it would be about, you know, $12 and uh, 67 cents or something like that. So that is the solution to the monopolist problem. Now we'll take this back to cost curves where it's a little more complicated.